Okay, guys, how you doing? Yeah, I'm Sheikh of Ruth Fonsis, with my name. You have Rafa, you have Rafa, you have Rafa Fonsis, and Spirit, my name. All right, guys, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I'm Sheikh of Ruth Fonsis, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Fonsis, with my name. All right, we're ready. You guys know what to do, right? Most important thing you can do for us, be prayed up. Always ask the Spirit to come and take over. He's our teacher. We are his disciples. Holy Spirit, use me as his mouthpiece. Holy Spirit, give us illumination, understanding, wisdom, destroy distractions, and enable me to speak clearly. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, in your mighty name. Without error, without stammering, without confusion, without stuttering, without my lisp, correct all mistakes and recall every jot, total portion of Scripture perfectly. We ask you, Holy Spirit, strengthen my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs, and chest with the health I need, for you are the breath of life, the Lord and giver of life. Give me miraculous self-control, self-discipline, self-restraint, self-constraint. Control my passions. Control our passions that we're not controlled by them. Intense discipline spiritually and physically for all of us. And please, Holy Spirit, help me to get healthier and use my health not for vanity, but to serve the church of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and <clears throat> to be used as your vessel to bless the church of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and your glory, you are inseparable from the Father and the Son. Make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. Destroy distractions from Satan. Destroy confusion. Destroy agitation. Destroy all slander and blasphemy. If dogs come, muzzle them and crush their mouths and teach them the fear of the Lord. Give us constraint. May we be your mouthpieces, your hands and feet. Our bodies, your temple, fill us and seal us and possess us, our loved ones, my daughters, their mother, and purge us in your purifying fire. Purify us and wash us, cleanse us in the blood of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Feed every one of us, nourish every one of us, <clears throat> heal every one of us, perfect every one of us, transform every one of us, our loved ones. My daughters are mothers, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. Grant us the flesh of Jesus Christ and the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the flesh of Jesus Christ is true food. The blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, is true drink. And it's for our <clears throat> healing, our wholeness, our salvation, redemption, deliverance, protection, our nourishment. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, we conquer Satan under our feet. Give us perfect faith in our Lord Jesus to overcome the world and crucify our flesh, destroy our flesh, destroy the fruits of our flesh, and destroy the beams in our eyes. Destroy hypocrisy, destroy double-mindedness, fears, doubts, unbelief, Holy Spirit. Remove all of that from us and give us the greatest gifts in your sight. Perfect faith in our God, hope in our God, perfect love for our God. You are our God, one with the Father and the Son. The Father is our God. The Lord Jesus Christ is our God who became flesh, God in flesh, the God-man, the virgin-born Son of Mary, the Holy Theotokos. I ask the Holy Spirit <clears throat> that you empower me to use the gifts of ministry for the glory of Jesus Christ, not to prostitute myself for fame, numbers, money, never succumb to any scandal, never succumb to lust, and purities protect us men from Jezebels and protect our sisters from wolves and beatify us with the beauty of Jesus Christ. Bless my neighbors with sound sleep so that I'm not a nuisance to them. The light of the Lord Jesus Christ shining in and through us, shining in and through our loved ones, my daughters, my angels, bring them to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and their mother to repent. Guide this channel, own this ministry, close the door of censorship that no man no man can oppose. You close doors that no man can shut and open doors that no man <clears throat> can shut. You close doors that no man can open. Save me from error. Save me from stammering. Save me from confusion lisp. <clears throat> Help me recall the facts perfectly, accurately. Destroy agitations against our minds, distractions against our minds. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, illumination to plunge the depth of Scripture. Feast on the meat of Scripture and expose Muhammad and his false god. So Muslims get convicted and repent, and the church gets strengthened for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way. And show me what to talk about and what not to talk about, and bless your servants who are gathered, that they are your disciples. I am your disciple. They are not my disciples. Save us for the glory of our 
God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, save us and make us the possession of Abba, Father, the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. You glorious, beautiful, eternal spirit of the Father and the Son. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to fast. Teach us how to sing praises to our God, to praise our God. Teach us how to study scripture, to practice what we preach, to practice what I preach. Destroy the beams in our eyes, not to have double lives. <clears throat> Meditating on scripture and help me to be disciplined, to read my Bible daily. Finish Isaiah and also start the Deuterocanonicals. Guide us, Holy Spirit, that no matter what they do to us, you will fill us as you filled the holy prophets and apostles of your church to love the Lord Jesus Christ, glorify the Lord Jesus Christ even unto death. If they beat us, imprison us, exile us, torture us, kill us, that you will control our tongues and mouths, guard our tongues and mouths, to never betray or deny our shame, in the name of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and protect us. And I pray you protect my daughters, my angels, and I hope I see them soon. Convict their mother to repent and protect our loved ones. For your glory, Holy Spirit, for the glory you have, in perfect and separate union with the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and Abba, Father, the Father, of God, and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen my throat and make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Watch it, Lord my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Son, Spirit, watch it, Lord my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. Henry, you know I'm going to cuss you out in your mother, right? Because if, if your mother wasn't a Shia prostitute, you wouldn't ask an irrelevant question. Watch what I say. Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, the Son, the Spirit. All right, let me do this. Glory to the Father, Spirit. You guys know the rules. You're going to focus. You're going to engage me, no one else. You're going to stay on topic. You're not going to ask irrelevant questions. You're not going to post verses. You're not going to help me. Let the Holy Spirit work through me to glorify our God and save Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and you're going to learn. Just listen. We're going to destroy Islam. Now, Lord willing, I drive out tomorrow. So, Lord willing, I drive out by the grace and mercy of our God and save Lord Jesus Christ. And if I make it to my hotel room at a reasonable time, then I will stream if the Lord Jesus Christ wills. If the Father wills, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ wills. If the Holy Spirit wills, for the Father's will is the Son's will, the Spirit's will. One perfect, eternal, almighty God. Our God who lives, Father, Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. And I will begin my response to James White's miss. Interpretation, mischaracterization, mischaracterization of the work of thy priest in the Old Testament. If the Lord wills, if I make it. So pray, because Lord Jesus willing, Tuesday I'm going to have a meeting with that young <clears throat> individual. Pray. Holy Spirit saves me from accidents, from harm. Helps me to speak the right words to this person. Capture that person's heart. Take that person captive for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I return safely. So that said, class rule starts. Look at this guy. It starts when I begin talking. So focus, hit the like button, subscribe, and invite folks. And Lord willing, we will be talking about Good Friday. I will also talk about Palm Sunday because there are going to be two Easter's. The Easter that's coming up and the one for the Orthodox on May 5th. Someone wanted me to comment on this. As you can tell, I'm a little tired. That's okay. Holy Spirit, reinvigorate us, revive us, rejuvenate us, replenish us, regenerate us, and do that for my daughters, even their mother to repent, and our loved ones, and refresh us for the glory of the Father, and of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Someone wanted me to ma make mention of this, about the Jehovah's Witnesses, their memorial service. You should remember, and if you don't, I'll remind you, because I mentioned it in the past. Jehovah Witnesses only celebrate what we would call the Lord's Supper once a year. What they do is they will gather on the time the Jews will celebrate Passover, Pesach, and they will gather in their halls or they even may run out a center. Watch how they observe the Lord's Supper. You ready? They don't have the Eucharist. You guys ready? You want to hear? These poor Jehovah's Witnesses who have been deceived and brainwashed, may the Lord Jesus Christ use all of us, use you and me to bring them out. You know what they do? Once a year, they will take the bread, pass it to one another. They can't eat it. 
and take the cup, look at it, and pass it to another. They can't drink it unless they're the 144,000. They're part of the anointed class. This is how they celebrate the Lord's Supper. Can you believe it? A travesty, an abomination, a blasphemy against the God of Scripture. Do you know that? Now, I wanted to go to one of these memorial services. Maybe I will be able to see it for myself. But that's what they do. Once a year, they try to have Passover coincide with the Jewish Passover, Pesach. And they just pass the bread, look at it, to the next guy, and pass the cup. Because they're told only the anointed class of 144,000 are to take the Lord's Supper. So if you're not part of the anointed class, you don't touch it. They don't even have a monthly, a weekly, right, or quarterly observation of the Lord's Supper, which is not the Eucharist, which you'll find in Protestant churches. It's once a year, and they can't even partake of it. Do you know that? They can't even partake of it. They just look at the bread and the cup, the elements, and they remember what Jesus did. You believe that? This is Joe's Witnesses. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer so we can begin. Lord, bless the numbers for your glory, not for my praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in your name, in the name of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Okay, now we're ready. Just so I can confirm to myself that I'm still around the same weight. I haven't gained weight. May the Lord Jesus Christ help me to stay lean and healthy and get leaner. This fits perfectly. So good. So I'm paranoid. So you see, my mind's paranoid. All right. So somebody's texting me. Buddy, I'm live right now. Live stream. Okay, watch one second. Okay, we're ready. Let's begin. Continuation. Thank you. Well, pray for me. I get healthier, but more importantly, holier. And my daughters follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus allows me to see them grow up. All right. The articles related to the subject are in the description box. Lord willing, if I make it to my destination tomorrow, and it's not too late, we're going to discuss high priest and atonement in my series, Destroying Limited Atonement, Particular Redemption. Okay? But the articles for this session are in the description box. So let's begin. First, I'm going to begin by playing a clip. Hamza Yusuf. Hamza yourself. Hamza yourself. All right. Let me do this. All right. He makes a statement that's sh uh, shocking to me because I've actually used the hadith that he alludes to to show it must be referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. But what do I mean? First, let me get the clip. Let me get the clip. What day is it? Manasin and you and me, all of the people, and I don't know why. Lord willing, in one of these streams, I'll be eating a croissant to celebrate the destruction of Islam, the monotheist, and their pagan fast to the moon god. Lord Jesus Christ, save Muslims. From Allah of the Quran. And help us state Muhammad with perfect, perfect hatred. Now, why do I say that? Why do I say help us state Muhammad with perfect hatred? Okay, I'm going to show you why. Okay, let me show you. Let's open up the scriptures. Let's open up the scripture. You ready? You and me, all other people. Psalm 139, 19 to 22. Okay, let's, let's screen share. Let's enjoy the session. Class has begun. You and me, all of the people, and I don't know why. I don't know why I'm singing that song. If you ask me why, I have no idea. All right, here you go. Psalm 139, 19 to 22. 
Remember, we believe the Psalms are inspired, but they need to be explained. And we trust Holy Spirit to be our teacher and to teach us and correct us and guide us for the glory of the Father, for the glory of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, for the glory of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Psalm 139, 19 to 22. Now, if you're wondering why I keep using legacy in their Bible, I explain. Because it uses the form of the divine name, Yahuwah or Yahweh or Yehovah or Yahoo or Jehovah. Okay, watch here. Focus, Jerome. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God. Oh, men of bloodshed, depart from me. That's Muhammad. For they speak against you wickedly. And your enemies take your name in vain. That's Muslims. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Yahweh? And do I not revile those who rise up against you? I don't see Jesus in you. I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Utmost hatred, right? Now, let's look at how some other versions translate that. Psalm 139. Verses 19 and 22, but specifically 22. Let's see. I hate them with perfect hatred. Perfect hatred. See that? You caught it? If you ever want to compare a verse in multiple translations, it gives you that option at BibleGateway.com. When you type in a verse and it says, in all English translations. You see? You caught it? No, I don't like the New English translation. You can like it. Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> what? Yeah, I said it. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What? Crazy, man. You is crazy. Should I have some water? Yeah, I need some water. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. What? Sucker. Sucker MC, call me sire. Now, let's play this clip, and then we're going to Allah. I'm going to show you that Allah prays to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you that Allah prays to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in one of my articles that I wrote because I didn't do it earlier. You and me. So we're going to go right here. What happened, dude? What day is this? Why do you keep saying what day is this? I have no idea. All right, right here. All right. Right there. You ready? Everyone ready? All right. Let me go to the timestamp. Let's go to the timestamp. You and me. Man, this is one. Sack, you, sir. I just saw the image you posted on Facebook, and it's one scary image, dude. You freaked me out, dude. Because it's true. Satan has infiltrated schools to brainwash and program our children. May the Lord Jesus Christ save our children. But that was a freaky image. Look at this dude, man. He's got a scary imagination. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look what he posted here. Hold on. What? What are you? What? Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. Why don't you hold on? No, why don't you hold on? Why should I hold on? Let's see. Hold on. You and me, all of the prayer people. I don't know why. Look at this image, dude. This guy's scary, man. Dude, you freaking me out, mister. Look at that image. Wow. Damn. That's exactly what it is. Satan infiltrating our schools. May the Lord Jesus Christ protect our children. Can you make it a little more scarier so I can have nightmares and cry myself to sleep? All by myself. All right, let's go to Hamza yourself. Hamza yourself, sucker. Okay, let's go. I don't want to be... All by myself. All right. We start at the 49 minute, 44 second mark. It's going to be very short to the point. 49 minute, 44 second mark. Look at this. He's going to confirm some of the narrations I've cited to show that the Islamic sources teach Lord Jesus Christ was beaten and killed. He's going to confirm it. Watch. I'm going to show you what he's referring to. What I say? Hold on. What was it? Oh, 44. Okay. Obama. Shut up, man. No wonder you're by yourself because the way you sing. Okay, listen. 
As children, how many of us have had that tribulation? Nobody had the tribulation of the prophets. We know the tribulation. The prophet described Isa alayhi salam when they were beating him and blood was coming from his, his body. And he said, Allahumma gfir qawmi finnuhum la ya'lamun. The Prophet described that. He said, yeah. forgive my people. They don't even know what they're doing. There's people that don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. There are children. How many of us have had that tribulation? Nobody had the tribulation of the Prophets. We know the tribulation. The Prophet described Isa alayhi salam when they were beating him and blood was beating coming him? from his, his body. And he said, Allahumma gfir qawmi finnuhum la ya'lamun. The Prophet described that. He said, forgive my people. They don't even know what they're doing. So he admit, Muhammad confirmed that Jesus Christ, when he's getting beaten by his people, said, Allah, forgive my people. They don't know what they're doing. He admits that, that it's about Jesus. Confirming what I've said in my sessions on what does the Quran actually teach about the Lord Jesus Christ Crucifixion, death, and resurrection. He just made it one more time. And then I'm going to show you the article. And I'm going to show you what narrations he's citing. Children, how many of us have had that tribulation? Nobody had the tribulation of the prophets. We know the tribulation. The prophet described Isa alayhi salam when they were beating him. And blood was coming from his, his body. And he said, Allahumma gfir qawmi finnuhum la ya'lamun. The Prophet described that. He said, forgive my people. They don't even know what they're doing. There's people that don't even know why they're doing what This is from Riz Multimedia, Riz Talks, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, Lessons from the World, the Sunnah of Tribulation. Now, let me show you what hadith he was narrating. Here's my article. I'm going to give it to you. It's in the description box. And then we're going to go into the topic. You and me. Why am I singing that song? I have no idea. There's some songs that just stick in your mind for no reason. Here you go. Here it is right here in my article. This is what he was referring to. Now, I quote also Aisha Beauty translation, but sadly, her website is defunct. I hope it goes back up. But you can use archive.org and find it. Two different translations of this narration from Bukhari. And he just told you, this is Jesus. Here's the article. He said, Muhammad is referring to Jesus. Watch here. Here's my article on it. Save the material. Use it, brethren. What day is it? What happened, man? All right, here you go. What day is it? Sal Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 56, Number 683. Narrated Ibn Masood. As if I saw the Prophet talking about one of the Prophets. Now, Hamza Yusuf made this explicit because Hamza Yusuf is aware the only Prophet that we have a record of saying similar words is our Lord Jesus Christ from the cross in Luke 23, 34. Now, conveniently, whoever narrated this from Muhammad failed to mention Jesus' name. Hmm. The prophet talking about one of the prophets whose nation had beaten him and caused him to bleed while he was cleaning the blood of his face saying, Oh Allah, forgive my nation for they have no knowledge. Now here's another, another version of the same narration. Aisha Beauty, now her, I wonder if it's up again. Let's see. See, defunct. Number 3239, Said Collection Bukhari, chapter 6 for Book of the Prophets. It is related that Abdullah said, it is as if I could visualize the prophet recounting about one of the prophets whose people had beaten him and made him bleed while the blood was running down his face. He was saying, oh Allah, forgive my people, they do not know. Now, this comes from the English translation of Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal, volume 3, pages 584, 585. And again, same Musnad ibn Hanbal. Humble, Sahih. This is Sahih because of corroborating evidence. It's, it's not as Hassan good. Sahih means sound good. This one is Sahih. Look, 4331. It was narrated that Ibn Masood said, A man among the Ansar said something objectionable about the Prophet, and I could not refrain from telling the Prophet about it. I wish that I could have sacrificed all my family, my wealth, rather than have uttered it. He said, They annoyed. 
Musa with more than this, and he was patient. Now, conveniently, the narrator mentions that Muhammad referenced Moses, Musa. So Muhammad mentioned Musa, Moses. But then notice how that other prophet, the name of which was not given. Then he told us that a prophet was rejected by his people and they wounded him in the head and we brought the message of Allah to them. And he was wiping the blood from his forehead saying, Oh Allah, forgive my people for they do not know. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Musud said, when the messenger of Allah shared out the flocks of Anain at Al-Jirana, they crowded around him and the messenger of Allah said, Allah sent one of his slaves. Notice again, they don't remember the name. How convenient to his people, and they struck him and wounded him in the head. And he started wiping the blood from his forehead and saying, Lord, forgive my people, they do not know. Abdullah said, it is as if I can see the Messenger of Allah showing how that man wiped the blood from his forehead and said, Lord, forgive my people, for they do not know. The only prophet that we have a record of saying something similar is the Lord Jesus. Note, Luke 23, 34. There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Got it? There you go. Thank you, Amza Yusuf, for acknowledging that Muhammad is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ which means that you just admit the Lord Jesus Christ was beaten and killed on the cross because he said this from the cross. You caught it? Everyone got it? So use the material. Screen large enough? It should be. Let me see. Screen is large enough, right? All right. Now let's go to the other topic, Allah. Remember... I'm using this argument against Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims. Why? Because they believe the Quran is uncreated. And I'm going to give you the link to that article which says it. Here it is. Here is a response to a Mohammedan, a vile, filthy Mohammedan. Which of these Mohammedans are not vile who are doing supposedly dawah? Here it is. Mohammedan Jalaz, a Jalal Abu Rub. Centenarianity exposed. We're going to have some fun, guys. No, Joel. Joel, see, this is why I block people, brother. Joel, you know I block people? Because they don't pay attention. I'm going to give you a million bucks where I said that this was attributed to Moses. I'm going to give you $10 million to go back and show where I said, those words were attributed to Moses. See, people like you are dangerous. People like you are dangerous because you don't listen well, and then you're going to lie and misinterpret what someone else says and make them look bad. You're dangerous, Joel. You're not a good student. You suck. Did anyone hear me say that Muhammad took the words of Jesus, put in the mouth of Moses? Joel, you know you got to go, right? You're not coming back? You know you can't come back to my channel and you can't comment and never, ever mention my name on your mouth and say that I taught you anything? Okay? So now you got to get out of here, right? Don't come back. Now, Mike Winger would like to have you. Mike Winger would like to have you. Did you guys remove him, by the way? You guys removed him, right? Thank you. Did anyone hear me say that? Did anyone hear me say that, yeah, Muhammad took Jesus' words and put it in the mouth of Moses? Okay. I'm going to start blocking you guys if you don't pay respect and listen and stop commenting and just engage me and answer me. Start blocking you guys. I'd rather have few who are sound and willing to listen than large numbers who won't do anything for the kingdom. Because they're just here to be entertained. Okay? Now, with that said, so you don't think I'm lying 
Here is one of many articles where I quote Salafi apologists who then cite their theologians and scholars saying that the official position of Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'a and I don't just quote Salafi, I quote other Sunnis like the Ashari Maturidi, like Hamza Yusuf. They all agree, they all confirm the Quran is Kalam Allah and it's not created here. I'm quoting Jalal Abu Rubs, a nasty, vile Salafi Wahbi, from his book Biography and Mission of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, right? Page 512. Okay. Look what he says. Watch here. Imam Ibn Abdul Wahab asserts the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wa Al Jama'ah with regards to the status of the Quran. Imam Muhammad Ibn Abdullah wrote, I believe that the Quran co contains Allah's kalam, speech, a revelation from not created. And in his footnote, look what Jalal Abu Rub says. On the Quran being Allah's kalam, word, speech. Imam Abu Jafar at Tahawi, whom I also cite, because Hamza Yusuf translated the, the creed of Tahawi in English, a major scholar of Hadith from the Hanafi Madhab, Madhab, said the Quran is Allah's speech. It started from him. He truly said it, but we do not have knowledge as the nature of how he said it. Oh, mystery. Allahu alam. Billa kaifa. I sent to his messenger, he sent it to his messenger, Holy Spirit save me from error, in Revelation, and the believers truly believe in all of this. They believe that the Quran is truly Allah's word, not created like the speech of men. Consequently, whoever hears it and claims that it's the speech of men will be committing kufur. Allah chastises and admonishes those type of person, this type of person, and promises them sakar, as a consequence of their statement. This Quran is but the speech of men. Thus we have knowledge and certainty that the Quran is the speech of the creator of men. It is nothing similar to speech of men. Ibn Abi al-Izz Shar al-Aqidah al-Tahawiyyah. For proof that Allah speaks with what he wills, Imam Ibn Abi al-Izz al-Hanafi who explained Imam Tahawi's book and Aqidah mentioned this ayah. And when Musa came at the time and placed a point of us, and his Lord spoke to him. Now, notice again, right? Watch here. In his footnote, Jalal Abu Rub, and he's now representing the view of Sunni scholarship. Sunni Muslims, which are the largest sect of Islam, this is their official teaching. So, again, look what he says. Footnote 1438, Amr bin Dinar, one of the scholars of the Salaf said, for 70 years, I have heard those whom I met, Salaf scholars, Salaf are the first three generations of Muslims, Muhammad's companions, their followers, the Tabi'in, and then the followers after them, Tabi Tabi'in, Tabi Tabi'in. 70 years I have heard those whom I met state that Allah is the creator and everything else is created except for the Quran. It is Allah's speech, not created. It started from him, and to him it shall return. Ibn Taymiyyah said that this statement is authentic and well known from the Salaf. We got it? We got it, right? And I'll come back to this later. So you learn, and you can learn how to use these arguments in your debates because they have their own trinity. What do I mean? They have Allah. The Quran, which is uncreated, that became a book, and the Spirit. In fact, it's more than a trinity, because I'm going to show you, which I've done in previous sessions, which is in the article, that each chapter of the Quran is a living, conscious, uncreated being. So if the Quran consists of 114 chapters, so we take 114, we take Allah and the Spirit. That means the Muslim God consists of 116 gods or divine persons. But we'll come back to that. And I've done many sessions on this already. And many articles. But now let's come back to this other article. You ready? You and me. Who does Allah pray to? 
And who does Allah seek guidance from? Because if you remember in part one, I showed that Allah prays to be guided on the straight path. We'll revisit that. We'll revisit that now. One second. You and me. Here's the article. Watch here. And it's in the description box. Okay. Yeah, those extra surahs too. Okay, there's the article. But before I even go to the article, let me show you this. Let me show you from the Quran browser again. This is a prayer. And Allah's praying. Let me enlarge it. Oh, I don't know why. what day is it. Now remember, just to remind you of part one, we went through this, but we're increasing repetition. We need to hear something repetitively. I hope you're not tired. All right, let's see. Big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. Right? That's big enough? Remember, chapter on the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, is uncreated, right? Remember what he said? The Quran is uncreated. So this prayer is uncreated. This surah is uncreated. So that means before creation in eternity, this is Allah's speech. That means this is Allah speaking. Allah must have been speaking this. Otherwise, how is it his speech? You with me there? You see the dilemma? Right? So, watch here. In eternity, because the Quran is uncreated, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alameen. In fact, I forgot. I got to do the Arabic too. I like it when I say it in Arabic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi. Rabbul Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malak yawm ad-Din. Okay. Now, guys, let's see if you remember from part one. Let's see if you remember from part one. Let's see if you remember. Okay, guys, I want to see if you remember. If this is Allah's speech, this is Allah speaking, and his speech is uncreated, and this is a prayer, that means Allah is praying. So Allah is saying, all the praises and thanks be to Allah. Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the Alameen, the most beneficent, the most merciful, the only owner and only ruling judge of the day of recompense, day of resurrection. But then Allah all of a sudden says, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help for each and everything. So Allah is saying to himself, we, which is me, worship you alone, which is me, and you alone, which is me, we, which is me again, ask for help. Now watch this part though. Watch this part. Allah speaking, guide us to the straight path. So Allah is saying, to Allah, Allah, guide us, which is me, who happens to be you, on the straight path. Adina Sirat al Adina and Amta. The way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who earned your anger, such as the Jews, nor of those who went astray, such as the Christians. You caught it? Now. I'm going to prove to you Allah is praying this prayer and Allah is asking himself and he speaks to himself in the plural to guide himself on the straight path. That this is Allah saying, guide us to the straight path. Okay, let me show you. Ready? Watch here. Guide us, this is all from part one, but I got to make the point so I can now show you. Allah may actually be praying to the Lord Jesus Christ. Guide us to the straight way. 
Al Sirat Al Mustaqim. Now watch. 11 verse 56. 1156. I put my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Now remember, my Lord is Allah, your Lord is Allah. There is not a moving living creature, but he has grasp of its forelock. Verily, my Lord, who is Allah, is on the straight path. Siratin, Siratin Mustaqim. Sirat Mustaqim. Siratin Mustaqimin. Wait, he just said. My Lord is Allah, and Allah, my Lord, is on the straight path, proving that it's Allah praying in chapter 1-6, guide us through the straight way. This It's the same in Arabic. Al-Sirat al-Mustaqim. Difference is its definite article. Inna Rabbi ala siratin, siratin mustaqimin. You caught it? That's why I say, Bible Sunnah, King James Version, Make sure you rewatch, re rewatch the sessions until you learn these arguments because you need to use them to destroy Islam and glorify Jesus Christ our Lord. So now that you remember that, in this article, I'm going to show you that you can prove that Allah actually prays to Jesus. Allah actually prays to Jesus. Let's continue. There are at least three verses where we're told Allah prays. Are you ready? Three verses in the Quran, and guys, I have hundreds of sessions and articles destroying the Muslim lie, destroying the Muslim attempt of denying that their God prays. So just do use the search engine here. You do this. You go to my channel. You go to my channel right here. Can you see it? Let's do here. Let's enlarge it. You click here, you put Allah praise. That's it. Search engine. Allah praise. Muslim challenges prove that Allah prays and worships. Muhammad Ijab, Muslim admits Allah prays to himself. Now, sadly, this is a Catholic church where they let the Muslims come and pray, desecrating the place. Jesus says, Jehovah. And Allah prays. Now, if you want to see how heavy I was and your prayers, the Lord Jesus and his infant love, our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, hearing your prayers for me, look how heavy I was. According to Muslims, is Allah. As Jay Smith does. Did you see what he just said? What the Lord Jesus saved me from? See what the Lord Jesus Christ saved me from? He delivered me from obesity, gluttony, may deliver me from lust, and I stay lean till I die. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, glory to the Holy Spirit. One more time. Why do you think I ask your prayers that God give me the victory and not give me what I deserve, and I stay fit and lean by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and not be vain about it? One more time, look. I'm going to use Mark 1 to prove that Jesus is Jehovah God in, in, in the flesh. All right? Are we ready now for the second part? See that? Are we ready for the second part? I wonder where was this at. Was that with my kids at that time? Exactly. That's why we're doing it. So that sincere Muslims will receive answers. I don't think I was at my house anymore. Anyway. See, now this is how I look. May I look this way and stay this way? Please, Father, please, Lord, we're not be vain. But anyway, Allah prays. Allah prays. Now look how heavy I was here. Just uh, bear with me, guys. This is life, so I just want to remind myself. Never like Greater can only mean in terms of quantity. They'll be doing more miracles than Jesus did. But the You see my marriage ring? I was married at this time. They'll be performing the same kind of miracles that Jesus did while he was on earth. Now, how do we know that? Now, we'll compare that with now how I look. See? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Triumph God. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my love, my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Eternal Spirit of the Father and of the Son, our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to lose this way. Keep it off and be holy. Save me. Finish the work you've begun in me. Yep.
gold back then. What I tell you, why do I keep telling you? See my face? Why do I keep telling you? Watch my older streams. There's a lot of meat in those streams. Make them go viral. Now, with that said, let's come back to the point. Yeah, you saw my marriage ring? It's sad. But anyway, his will be done. The Lord save me. May he save my daughters. Okay. Just put in Allah praise and boom. See? Allah praise, right? Allah praise. You're going to find all these articles. Now, you can go to my blog, Answering Islam. Blog. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Answering Islam blog.wordpress.com you put in Allah praise you see how easy it is guys don't ask me just put in and look look what you find revealing the God whom Allah worships and prays to the God of Judaism praise Allah a schizophrenic deity who worships himself Allah worships with the Quran you see and then you click older see see how easy it is even more proof that Allah worships just like his followers do there you go so use the search engine, study the arguments, learn them and share them. Do your part to magnify our God and save Lord Jesus Christ. All right, now let's go back to the article. Oh, the Billahi Muhammad Rajim. We got it? You learning? Enjoying this? Okay. Does Allah pray? Some of you is going to be shocking. The Muslim God prays. Watch the sessions, read the articles where you but their lies that the Arabic word doesn't mean pray. But that's not my focus today. I'm going to show you. You can make a strong case that uh, strong case that Allah prays to Jesus. Chapter two, one fifty-seven. They are those on whom are the prayers salawatun. If you want to know what the Arabic says, ask an Arabic-speaking Christian. They won't lie to you. Salawat is plural for prayers. Whose prayers are on them? The prayers of their Lord and His mercy. Now, if you want the most accurate Quran translation for ministry and evangelism, get Osama Dakdok's The Generous Quran. Osama Dakdok, translate the Quran in English. He translates it warts and all, and he doesn't sugarcoat. This is the most accurate translation of the Quran that you as a Christian can use because it's from a Christian whose mother tongue is Arabic, who is an evangelist who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, and he translated as accurately as possible. And he won't deceive you. Okay? The generous Quran, an accurate modern English translation of the Quran, Islam, Sully's book. Those on whom are prayers from their Lord and mercy. And those are the guidance. Okay, now, because most translations, unless it's Palmer, won't translate the Arabic word salawat as prayer. They'll say blessing. But there's an Arabic word for blessing. It's baraka. Barakat, blessings. This means prayer. Okay, now, two more. Chapter 33, verse 43. He it is who prays for you. Allah prays for you. You salli for you and his angels too. Did you catch it? Both Allah and his angels are praying. And they're praying for believers. Now watch how silly and stupid this is. You ready? And they ask you all, who is Jesus praying to? The Father. We don't believe in a unipersonal God. Now watch. But look how silly this is. Are you ready? Look how silly this is. Let me enlarge you a little more. Allah and his angels are praying. For Muslims to do what? To bring you forth out of the darkness into the light, for he's merciful to the believers. You see how silly this is? Now, I understand angels praying to Allah to bring us out of darkness for Muslims and to the mercy of Allah. Why does Allah have to pray to bring people out of darkness into his mercy? So Allah has to remind himself. Allah has to say, Oh Allah, which is me. Bring them out of darkness into the light because you are merciful to believers. Okay, Allah, thank you for reminding me. You're welcome, Allah. How does this make sense? How does this make sense? 
Now watch here, though. It's going to get worse. The Osama Doc Doc translation. See? Look how accurate he translates it. He is, he is who preys on you and his angels. There you go. See? Now, 3356 Palmer gets it right. Verily, God and his angels pray. You saloon ala nabi. You saloon. You saluna for the prophet. Now, you see? Notice Allah is part of a group. He joins a group that prays, and he's praying with them, and they're praying for Muhammad. Is that how important Muhammad is? And then it says, look, Allah and his angels pray for Muhammad. How much more should you pray? Oh, you who believe, pray for him and salute him with a salutation. And again, Dr. Uch translates it correctly. Surely Allah and his angels pray on the prophet. Oh, you believe, pray on him and salute him, saluting. And there are hadiths that say Allah pray. You're enjoying this, guys? Stuff you've heard, but creature repetition. So become second agent. So for some of you, it's new. All right? For some of you, it's new. Riyad Salihin, translated by Aisha Buley. Now, her site is defunct. You have to find an archive.org. The Meadows of the Righteous. Okay? Oh, Abu Umama. By the way, you know what Abu Umama means? Abu Umama. Abu means father. Abu Umama. Abu Umama. Let's see what it means. You want me to translate what it means? Let's see here. Abu Umama. Let me show you. Abu Umama. Abu means father. So it's the father of your mama. The father of your mama. Yep, you guys know it. See, I'm proud of you guys. You're good students. May we all be students of the Holy Spirit. The father of your mama. Abu Umama, the father of your mama, because Abu means father. The father of your mama. And by the way, non-Arabic speakers, we're lying. We're just kidding. Not lying, but we're joking. Do not go up to a Muslim and say, hey, the father of your mama said, unless you want to get knocked out or cause jihad. We're joking, guys. Don't take us seriously. Reported that the Messenger of Allah said, now notice how many entities pray. Okay? Look how many pray. Allah, one, and his angels, two, and the people of the heavens, three, and the earth, four, even the ants, five, and the rocks, and the fish pray. So Allah is a part of a group, and they're all praying. Even ants and fish pray for blessings on those who teach people good. Here's another version. Hassan, good. This hadith is Hassan Gharib, Sahih. Good, sound. Jami Tirmidhi. Okay. Volume 5. And you can read online here. Oh, they changed the URL. You suckers. That's okay. That's fine. Here it is. The father, your mama, El Bahili narrated. Two men were mentioned before the Messenger of Allah. One of them a worshiper. And the other a scholar. So the Messenger of Allah said, the superiority of the scholar over, over the worshippers, like my superior, superiority, superiority, Lord, loosen my tongue, over the least of you. Then the Messenger of Allah said, indeed, now look how many individuals pray. Allah, one, his angels, two, the inhabitants of the heavens, three, and of the earth, four, even the ant in the hole, in his hole, five, even the fish, Six, say, Salah, that's prayer, upon the one who teaches the people to do good. Okay, so now we establish Allah praise. And here again, Tafsir ibn Kathir, Muhammad narrates a tradition. The people of Israel said to Moses, does your Lord pray? His Lord called him saying, O Musa, alayhi salam. They asked you if your Lord prays. Say to them, yes, I do pray. And my angels pray upon my prophets and my messengers. And Allah sent down this verse. Still not convinced? Here. Al-Ahadid Al-Qudsiyah. Divine Narratives. Translated by Dr. Abdul Khaliq Qazi and Dr. Alan Biday. Pages 305-306. Hadith 216. This is what I said to Musa alayhi salam. Does your Lord pray? Musa said, fear Allah, O sons of Israel. Allah said, O Musa, what did your people say? 
Moses said, oh, my Lord, you already know. They said, does your Lord pray? Allah said, tell them my prayer for my servants is at my mercy. So Allah is praying to himself, should precede my anger. If we're not so, I would have destroyed them. Now, you understand what Allah just told Moses, right? Musa, alayhi salam. Moses, said, Moses was told how Allah prays. So here, this is Allah praying. Oh Allah, ya Allah, Allahumma, yes? Make sure my mercy overcomes my anger so I don't destroy them. All right, Allah, I'll do as you say. Thank you, Allah. You're welcome, Allah. So Allah has to pray to himself, to remind himself, pray to himself, to remind himself to let his mercy overcome his anger so he doesn't destroy people. Thank you, Allah, for being so nice. Thank you. You hear me there? You're enjoying this? And they say, how can Jesus be God? Who's he praying to? How can Jesus be God? Who's he praying to? Yes, king of the angels. But don't change that. We're talking about Allah. All right. Yep, Allahumma, ortho Q is the Arabic of Elohim. I know you're trying to impress me, but you don't impress me much. That don't impress me much. Dalail al khayrat because you can't control your fingers to comment. You see that, ortho? You can't control your fingers to comment, ortho Q. You see that? You notice, right? I notice you every time. I try not to say much. You know, but I like you, ortho. You're a good man. I don't care what they say about you. You're a good man. All right. Here, this is from Dalail al Khairat Sharhi of Kara Daud, 1541. Supposedly talking about Muhammad and his night journey, his miraj. Then I beheld a single pearl of emerald green upon which was written this line of writing as he went to paradise. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasul al Khmara, Abu Bakr al Siddiq wa Umar al Farooq. There is no God but the one true God. Muhammad is the messenger of Khmare. Abu Bakr, the truthful, and Umar, the one who distinguishes truth from falsehood. Look what else he saw. This is what he's seeing in paradise. So Muhammad sees paradise, right? Him mentioned with Abu Bakr and Umar. Then he sees this. The Declaration of Unity, Kalimat at tawheed is written on the base that supports the divine throne. So on the throne of Allah, the base, on its base, and upon the legs of the throne itself, and is written over the gates of the seven heavens, is the Shahada. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his monkey. There is no Satan but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Sometimes this phrase was added, I've strengthened him through Ali. Now, as he goes, watch here. After all this occurred, I came to a state when I heard absolutely nothing, not the voices of the angels, nor the sound of any other thing. This state caused me to experience great terror. Then I suddenly heard a voice that seemed to be the voice of Abu Bakr saying to me, Kif, ya Muhammad, inna rabbuka yusalli. Stay your step, O Muhammad, for your Lord is praying blessing. <laughs> That's why people were silent. The people were silent. The people were silent, meaning the people of heaven, the inhabitants of heaven were silent because Allah was praying. Kif ya Muhammad, inna rabbuka yusalli. Stay your step. Stop, pause, Muhammad. Ya Muhammad, for your Lord is praying blessing, yusalli. <laughs> when I heard this voice, all the terror departed from me completely, and I began to wonder, what is Abu Bakr doing here? Has he surpassed me, I wonder? And what does this mean? The Lord is praying. The Lord is free from all exigence. What could be the meaning of all this? Muhammad the Messenger of Islam, his life and prophecy by Hajja Amina Adil, Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Kabani, Sheikh Nazim Adil Al Haqqani. Pages 231 32. Okay? And here again, are you guys bored or are you learning? And I gave you the articles so you don't have to. Remember, you can go to the articles. You're getting this? Everyone got it? Okay. Now watch again the Quran. 
Because we're going to now show who Allah prays to. The Quran is the word of God that emanated from him. Without modality in its expression, he sent it down to his messengers of revelation. The believers accept it as such literally. They are certainly, they are certain it is in reality the word of God, the sublime and exalted. Unlike human speech, it is eternal and uncreated. It is eternal and uncreated. The creed of Imam al Tahawi, Al Aqida al Tahawiya, translated by who? Hamza Yusuf, page 54. And again, same book, page 64. We do not argue about the Quran, rather, we testify that it is in the word of the Lord. It is the word of the Lord of the universe, as revealed through the trustworthy spirit, who taught it to the paragon of messengers, Muhammad. It is the word of God, the sublime exalted. No more, no mortal speech compares to it, and we do not say it is created. Shh. Now to unveil who Allah prays to. So here is the prayer of Allah. Quran is a speech that means it's him talking. So he's praying. He says, Show us the straight path. Al Sirat al Mustaqim. Wait. Remember in part one, I even proved that Allah recites the Quran, and according to Islam, reciting the Quran is ibadah, worship. Remember in part one? Here it is again in this article. Tirmidhi Hadith 660. Now the link is defunct, sadly. You're going to have to find it. Allah's Messenger said, a thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth, Allah recited, Taha Yasin. Ha ha! Ya sinner! Ha ha! Ya sin! Ya sinner! Ha ha ha! So a thousand years when there was no time. So let's count time when there was no time. A thousand years before time was created. Allah recited, Ha ha, ya sinner. Ta ha ya sin. When the angels heard the recitation. So does this mean angels were there before heavens and earth? <laughs> they said, happy are the people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this. And happy are the tongues which utter this. Right? Ah. Uh. Notice, Allah says, guide us in the right path. Al-Sirat al-Mustaqim, chapter 1, verse 6 of the Quran. And remember 1156? I put my trust in God, Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is not a moving creature, but he hath grass webs for lock. Verily, it is my Lord that is on a straight path. Inna Rabbi ala siratin mustaqimin. Sirat mustaqim. Damn. Now the answer. Unlike Allah, who's on a straight path and who prays the Fatiha, where he's praying to himself, saying, God is on a straight path, let's compare Jesus. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, be, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Look at the words of our Lord, the true God in flesh. I cannot lie, and I will never lie. And when death comes, I will come and take you to your mansion, so you can be with me where I am until the second coming. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Notice the difference. Allah is on the straight path, but Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the straight path. I am. Ana al-sirat mustaqim, al-tariq, and I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Interesting. Notice again, Allah, on the other hand, here is 1156, different versions. Muhammad's Lord is on a straight path. Lo, my Lord is on a straight path. My Lord is on a straight path. Surely my Lord is on the right path. My Lord is on the right path. Surely my Lord is on a straight path. Verily my Lord is on the right way. Right truly is the way in which my Lord goeth. Verily my Lord proceedeth in the right way. That means... You can now argue that since Jesus is the straight path, the way to everlasting bliss and glory, and Allah is praying to be guided on the straight path, and he's on that path, 
he must be praying to Jesus to guide him. Let's look at it logically. Allah is on a straight path and actually prays to someone to guide him on the straight path. Jesus Christ testifies to being the only straight path to salvation. Therefore, the Muslim deity must be praying to the risen Christ to keep guiding him on the straight paths since there is no salvation apart from the Lord Jesus. Acts 4, 5 to 14. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What is that name? The name they invoked to heal the paralytic, who is now fully well, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man stands well. You understand the implication of this? Or did you go to sleep? You understand the implication? Jesus is the only path to salvation, the only hope of salvation, and you must go to Jesus and ask Jesus to bring you salvation and bring you into glory. Allah prays to be guided on the straight path, and Allah is on the straight path. He is not the straight path. He's on the straight path and God prays to be guided on the straight path. Well, that means you can actually make a case that Surah Al-Fatiha is a prayer to, all, to Jesus. This is a prayer to Jesus. Allah is praying to Jesus. The most, in the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful, praise be to God, Jesus, the cherisher, sustainer of the world, most gracious, most merciful, that's Jesus, master of the day of judgment, and Jesus comes to judge the living and dead. Thee do we worship, and thine aid we seek. Show us a straight way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, and it's by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we're saved. Those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. You like it? You like it? Everyone got it? Everyone got it? I mentioned in part one, she's going to be baptized into the Catholic Church, Lord Jesus willing, next weekend. You caught it? Now, obviously, no Muslim is going to accept this. They're going to think I'm butchering the Quran. But it shows you how embarrassing this is. Say, hold on, Muslim. Aren't you embarrassed that our Lord Jesus Christ says he is the way, he's not on the way, and he's the destination because he brings us to him and the Father in glory. But your God, Allah, is on the path. What the hell is this all about? And how can Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, be uncreated and be the speech of Allah when it's a prayer? So it's the uncreated prayer of Allah. That means Allah is praying it? You got it? Now let's go into some other issue, shall we? I'll show you how embarrassing Islam is. <laughs> Nothing but feeling. Feelings. Whoa. You ready? We'll probably do a part three. You ready for now? Another embarrassing factor. Here's the article. Are you guys tired? You want me to call it quits? Because we got about another hour, Lord willing. All right. Focus, guys. Help me to help you. And do not be distracted. Help me to help you. Now, now, Bible student KJV, this is probably your first time hearing it. You're going to get blown away. The Quran is uncreated, and the Quran is Allah's speech. But Muhammad taught that the Quran speaks and will appear in visible form, and that chapters of the Quran will appear separately in visible shape and speak and argue with Allah. Here it is, Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, right there. Sahih Muslim. Talk about confusion. Abu Umama, the father of Umama said, he heard Allah's messenger say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. So the Quran will intercede for you if you recite it? Intercede to who? To Allah. But it's Allah's speech. How can Allah's speech intercede with Allah? Does that mean Allah is interceding with himself? 
So Allah will appear as the Quran to then intercede with himself and speak to himself. Oh, but hold on, it gets a little more confusing. Watch here. Recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. That's chapters 2 and 3 of the Quran. Why? For on the day of resurrection, they will come. They're going to appear visibly so you can see them. Either as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds and ranks. So you're going to see the chapters of the Quran, 2 and 3, appearing. Hey, there goes chapter 2. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right, kiddo. Yourself? Oh, look, there's chapter 3. Hey, chapter 3. Glad to see me. <laughs> and they will come and they will be pleading for those who recite them. Pleading with who? With Allah. Surat, recite Surat Al-Baqarah. For to take recourse to it is a blessing. And to give it up is a cause of grief. And the magicians cannot confront it. Muawiyah said, it has been conveyed to me that here, Batala, Batala means magicians. Now, guys, help me understand this. Can you? Can you help me? I'm tired and it's late and I'm not that intelligent. The Quran, the uncreated speech of Allah, it's the speech of Allah, meaning it's his speech. It's his talk. How can chapters of the Quran appear separately and take on shape and form, either as birds or shades or clouds, and then argue with Allah and beg Allah to forgive those that recited them if these chapters are Allah's speech? Can you help me? Can you help me understand? Does this mean Allah is going to manifest as the Quran and the chapters of the Quran appear in a different mode and then argue with himself and convince himself to forgive those that recited the Quran? Because this is Allah speaking, right? You with me there? Yep, exactly. You got it. Surah 434. Beat them. Pray for me. Beat your wives. All right. But now, wait. Jami Tirmidhi. Jami Tirmidhi. Hassan. You see? Hassan. It's good. Okay. Watch here. You guys laughing? We'll do a part three on this. So you can see it now from sunnah.com. I gave you the link. Here it is. Chapter, indeed, the one who does not have the Quran inside him is like the ruined house. Narrated Abu Huraira, that the Prophet said, the one who memorized the Quran shall come on the day of judgment. Come on the day of judgment. And the reward for reciting Quran says, now notice how much they lied. Dude, I'm going to block you. I'm not going to listen to a five-minute clip, and I'm live. Who are you? All right, anyway. Then the prophet said, the one who memorized the Quran shall come on the day of judgment. Right? Says, O Lord, decorate him. Now notice, the words, the reward for reciting is not there. The Quran will say, O Lord, decorate him. So he's he is done with the crown of nobility. Then it says, O Lord, give him more. So he's done with a suit of nobility. Then it says, O Lord, be pleased with him. So he is pleased with him and says, recite and rise up and increase and reward every ayah. Hassan, Jami Tirmidhi, Volume 5, Book 42, Hadith 2915. Okay, it's going to get more ridiculous. Watch this. Jami Tirmidhi. Now this one, this one you can find, it's here. The other link, it's defunct. By Haqqi, transmitted in Shu'ab al-Iman. Jami Tirmidhi, narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr. Allah's Messenger said, fasting, and by the way, Muslim scholars admit, don't let them lie to you today. Muhammad believed everything has consciousness and everything will appear visible. Even death will appear visibly and be slaughtered. Sign that death has been killed. So Muhammad even imagined that your fasting will appear visibly and conscious to then testify on your behalf and the Quran and to see for a man. Fasting says, O oh my Lord, I have kept him away from his food and his passions by day. So your fasting will come to life and appear in a visible fashion and speak. 
to defend you. Look, Allah he used to fast. And I kept him up. Reward him. The Quran says, I have kept him away from sleep by night, so accept my intercession for him. Talk about Looney Tunes religion. Exactly, Joel. What was he smoking indeed? Well, this is your brain when it's stoned on the black stone. Kissing the black stone, weeping on it, touching it. He was stoned. Too much kissing the black stone. Okay, but watch the implication. In reports classified as Hassan, good. Jalal Abu Arub's prophet even claimed the crown will appear as a pale man. It was narrated that Buraida said, I heard the prophet say, the Quran will meet its companion on the day of resurrection when his grave is open for him in the form of a pale man. So now the Quran will appear as a man? So Allah's speech will appear as a man? A pale man, a white man, not a black man? It will say to him, do you recognize me? He will say, I do not recognize you. It will say, I am your companion, the Quran. Now envision the scenario. Let's envision it, shall we? Okay, imagine. You're in the grave, you come out. Here, let me visualize it, okay? Here, let me do this. La, 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 something. A pale man comes. Okay, this is a pale man. Hey, hey, how are you? How are you? I'm fine. Yourself? I'm okay. You don't recognize me, do you? No. I'm the Quran. The Quran? Dude. When I was on earth, you were a book that I should cite. Yeah, but now I'm appearing as a pale man because I'm here to defend you. I'm your attorney. And I'm going to go before Allah and tell Allah, I kept you up at night and you recited me. Thank you, Quran. Well, you're welcome. Can I get a kiss? Sure. By the way, this is not toilet paper, what I have. So here you go. I am your companion, the Quran, who kept you thirsty on hot days and kept you awake at night. Every merchant benefits from his business, and today you will benefit from your good deeds. He will be given dominion in his right hand and eternity's left, and there will be placed on his head a crown of dignity, and his parents will be clothed with priceless garments, the like of which have never been seen in this world. They will say, why have... We've been called with this. It will be said because your son used to recite Quran. <gasps> then it will be said to him, recite and ascend in the degrees of paradise. And he'll continue to ascend so as long as he recites either a fast pace or a slow pace. Now, narrated by Ahmed in Al-Musnad and Ibn Majah in Al-Sunan, class as Hassan, good. Don't let him lie to you like fat boy Farooq, Fibin, Ibn Zinna, who took his Muslim friend's wife by Al Busayri and Al Zawaid and by Al Albani, even Al Albani in this work, Al Silsila Al Sahih, Sahiha, he deemed it Hassan. Good. And here's the translation from Ibn Majah Hassan, good. Hassan, and the link to it here. Okay, on here. It was later from Ibn Buraida that his father told that the Messenger of Allah said, the Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man and will say, I am the one that kept you awake at night and made you thirsty during the day. Hassan, volume 5, book 33, hadith 3781. Now, can I ask you guys a question? Remember, I'm not a, that intelligent. Isn't the Quran the speech of Allah? His speech, his speaking, his word uncreated? That's what they tell me. So how does the Quran appear as a pale man speaking to the man and going before Allah and defending him before Allah and asking Allah to forgive him? I thought this is Allah's speech. How does Allah's speech speak back to Allah? Is this Allah appearing in a different mode so we have Islamic modalism? Or does it imply something else? Let's see. Let's see if it applies something else. All right. And here, in case Fat Boy Fibbin says this is not a sound narration like he tried to do last time when he got embarrassed. Here, his a prominent Salafi website says, look, 
And it was narrated from Buray that the prophets of the Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. And will say, I am the one that kept you awake at night and made you thirsty during the day. Narrated Ibn Majah, class this Sahih, Sahih, by al Busayri and al Zawa'id, and by Ibn Hajar and al Ma'talib al Awliya. So Ibn Hajar and Busayri said it's sound. Al Albani said in Da'if Ibn Majah, it is Da'if, but may be classed as Hassan. It was classed as Hassan because of the hadith of Abu Hurairah and Al Silsala Al Sahiha. Iha! Rar, boy! All right, now, not to bore you to tears, let's now go on to another section. So the Quran is an intercessor whose intercession will be accepted, an opponent whose testimony will be accepted. Now, we're going to look at a final one. Watch here. Final one. And then I'm going to ask some questions. We got it, the pale man. This is all showing that this hadith is sound. Don't let fat boy lie to you. Right? Okay, so let's scroll down. I don't want to read all. You can read it. But learn the arguments and share them. Obliterate Islam for the glory of Jesus Christ. In authentic hadith, the Quran comes out as a pale man to meet the person that comes out of his graves. Now, this one here, and it's online. This one here, it's online. The excellent qualities of the Quran. Da Darimi transmitted it. Darimi transmitted it. Mishkat al Musabih, Book 8, Hadith 66. You ready? You want to laugh? Recite the rescuer. Res rescue means the one that delivers you. The one who saves you and delivers you. A-L-M, Alif, Lamim. So recite chapter 32. Why? Because it's going to rescue you. It's going to save you. For I have heard that a man who had committed many sins used to recite it and nothing else. It spread its wings over him and said, so this chapter of the Quran will have wings. It will appear as a bird. And then it will cover you with its wings. And then tell Allah to protect you from Allah. My Lord, forgive him. For he often used to recite me. So the Lord Most High made it an intercessor for him. So Allah accepted what chapter 32 said. So Allah gave into the demands of chapter 32, which is supposedly a speech. Record from a good deed and raise him a degree in place of every sin. Khalid said also, it will dispute on behalf of the one who recites it when he is in his grave. So chapter 32 is going to dispute for you argue for you, defend you by saying what? Oh God, if I'm a part of thy book, make me an intercessor for him. But if I'm not a part of thy book, blot me out of it. What the hell is going on here? Chapter 32, which is Allah's speech, will appear separately from the other chapters and tell Allah, you better make me an intercessor. If not, then erase me from your book. I don't want to have anything to do with your book. What the hell, dude? Are you guys like confused here? What the hell? But then notice there's another chapter that will also do the same thing. It will be like a bird putting its wing on him. It will proceed from him and will protect him from the punishment in the grave. So the chapters of the Quran can appear separately appear in visible form and shape separately, and they all speak. And they speak to the ones reciting these chapters and to Allah. He said the same about blessed is he. That means even chapter 67 will rescue you. Khalid did not go to sleep at night till he had recited them. Tau said they were given 60, 60 virtues more than any other surah in the Quran. Okay, um, I'm confused here. Let me understand this. Each chapter of the Quran can appear separately. Each chapter of the Quran is a living, conscious entity that can speak and be spoken to. And we're told the Quran will appear as a pale man. Chapters 2 and 3 of the Quran will appear as clouds or shades or flocks of birds. 
and chapters 32 and 67 will appear as birds and they will cover Muslims with their wings and plead with them, argue for them, and make Allah forgive them and save them. Do you caught it? Leave Joel here now. Let him just listen. So now let's count the present Quran, 114 chapters. All are uncreated. No beginning. All of them can speak separately from one another and speak to Allah. Now this either means there are 114 gods, Allah being the 115, or there are 115 eternal, uncreated, divine persons, so that the Muslim God is not a trinity. The Muslim God is, what? what's the word? 115 persons. And they all can talk to one another, appear separately in visible form from one another, argue with one another, or you have Islamic modalism where Allah will manifest as all these different surahs and speak to himself and argue with himself. Yeah, both of you. Isn't it ironic? You both said the same thing, ironically. Talk about confirmation. He said, Allah, we are legion. And this guy said legion right after you. Even this one here, look. Wow. You caught it? So now, who is Allah speaking to? I guess he's speaking to the Quran. The Quran speaking to him. But the Quran is a speech. So is Allah speaking to himself? Or is the Quran 114 eternal, uncreated, divine persons so that you have at least 115 Allahs or persons of Allah? And because they're inseparable, so in a sense, Allah is speaking to himself. And yet they want to make fun of Christians. Okay, now let's deal with another issue. I hope you're enjoying this. Let's see if I have to do a part three or not. We'll see. Let's see here. You and me, all, all the people. Yeah, let's do this one. Yep, the final one. This one here. We're going to have some fun. You ready? Oh, girls. They want to have fun. All oh, girls want to have fun. Want to have fun. Girls, girls want to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. One in the world, they what in the world they ain't ain't no man. What in the world they ain't ain't all fun. Girls just want to have fun. Sing it now. Okay, now, before I go into this, I want to ask another question. I'm going to ask another question. Let's go to my Quran browser. Okay, I want you to help me understand this one. Oh, girls, they want to have fun. Okay. Help me understand this, guys, okay? Let me get a more literal translation. That's not a literal one. Let me see. Yep, this is literal. Halali Khan, 2106. Okay, the verses of the Quran are the speech of Allah, right? The verses of the Quran are the speech of Allah, right? There are 360 gods and goddesses in the Kaaba. Now, king of the ages, help me to help you. Please stay focused. Whatever a verse do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? So Allah is saying, if there's a verse that has been canceled out or forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Know you not that Allah is able to do all things? Okay, guys, number all the verses and your question Tell her I haven't even tried to sing. I'm just making fun. By the way, I haven't seen you in ages of your question. Hope you're doing good. 
You doing good? It's been ages. Anyway. Okay, let me ask you a question again. Whatever verse do we abrogate cause to be forgotten? We bring a better one or similar to it. Okay, now if all the verses are the speech of Allah, do you understand, Mr. Henry? Focus, Mr. Henry. You're not helping me by commenting. I know you're excited to destroy Islam, but just listen. If all the verses of the Quran are the speech of Allah, Allah's speech is perfect, unmatchable, impeccable. If so, how can some verses be better than other verses or similar? Are you telling me that there are parts of Allah's speech that are better than other parts of his speech? So that at times Allah doesn't speak as clearly and other times he speaks in a much more polished, eloquent manner? Can you help me understand this? Can you help me understand that? Let me, uh, Guys, help me figure it out. See, that's why Ortho Q, you probably have to go, brother. Ortho, you don't mind. You're not going to be sad when I send you out here, right, to Mike Winger? Because you didn't get my point. Ortho, you know I love you, brother, right? But it was nice knowing you, huh? Make sure you say I had a Mike Winger to me, all right? Okay. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. It was nice knowing you, though. What day is it? Did it work, the block, by the way? I just want to make sure. Can you make sure it worked? Yeah, it did. All right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Mike Winger's waiting for you, okay? Guy doesn't control. He can't control himself, man. No matter how many times I tell this dude, the guy is just like a demon, bro, pricking him. They'll say, Allah can revise it. That wasn't my question. But you can tell that to Mike Winger. All right, now, do you understand why Ortho just showed his stupidity because he didn't understand the point? It's not about Allah revising the Quran. All of the Quran is Allah's speech. All of the Quran is Allah's speech. Every verse is Allah's speech. How can Allah say that there's one part of his speech better than another part of his speech or similar? If Allah's speech is perfect, impeccable, infallible, unlike anything in creation, and he speaks flawlessly, how can one part of his speech excel another part of speech? Does that mean throughout time, Allah's speech improved, so he got better at speaking? Yeah, Mr. Henry, don't waste your time. That's why Arthur had to go. He didn't learn. Everyone got it? You see the problem here? But now let's go to the nightmare. Let's go to nightmare. This article here, it's in the description box. Gave you the link. Now watch here. Guys, you want to be blown away? Remember, all these verses are uncreated. They've always existed, right? All right. Watch here. Look at how many times the Quran's going to say, the Quran is clear. The, the Quran is fully detailed. Explains everything. Explains all its verses clearly. Look how many times. Look, there's so many, I probably won't be able to read all of them. And I show you, when these verses were composed according to Muslims, some in Medina, some in Mecca. Thus doth God make clear signs in order that you may understand. 2, 2.42. Chapter 11, verse 1. Alif Lam Ra, a book whose verses are set clear. <clears throat> 15, verse 1. <clears throat> ALR, these are the ayats of Revelation of a Quran that makes things clear. All right. Let's skip this part. Let's go here. Mecca, 6.55. And thus do we explain the ayat in detail, the verses in detail. Notice, in detail, fully detail, right? And again, chapter 6, verse 97, 98. We have indeed explained in detail our ayat. Ayat means the verses. In detail, we've explained it. And then if you still don't get it, he ends it by saying, indeed, we have explained in detail our revelations. This Quran for people who understand. 6105. 
Then we explain variously the verses that we may make the matter clear. All right. 6114. Shall I seek a judge other than Allah while it is he who has sent down unto you the book explained in detail? In detail, right? 6126. We have detailed our revelations. 732. Thus we explain the ayat in detail for people who have knowledge. 752. Certainly we have brought to them a book which we have explained in detail with knowledge. 174. Thus do we explain the ayat in detail. I mean, how many times does he have to repeat it? In Mecca and Medina. 1037. Right? And this Quran is not such as could ever be produced by other than Allah, but is a confirmation of which was before and a full explanation of the book. Completely. Fully. 9-11. We explain the ayat in detail. Still not getting it? Chapter 11, verse 1. This is a book whose verses have been made firm and free from imperfection, imperfection, and then they have been expounded in detail. Oh, you're still not getting it. All right. Chapter 12, verse 111. Right? Indeed, in their stories, there's a lesson for men of understanding. It, the Quran, is not a forged statement, but a confirmation of Allah's existing books and a detailed explanation of everything. Notice, not some things, not most things. Everything in this book is explained. Everything. Still don't get it? 1689. And we have sent down to thee the book explaining all things, meaning everything in this book will be explained thoroughly. 3028. Thus do we explain the signs in detail. Now watch this passage. I'm going to quote in two different translations. 41 verse 3. A book whereof the verses are explained in detail. The verses are explained in detail. A book that explains all things. All right, now notice another translation, 41 3. A scripture whose verses provide the complete details in an Arabic Quran for people who know. All right, is it clear? These verses are uncreated. They've always existed. Could it be any clearer that the Quran claims this book explains all things in detail clearly, explains everything, right? Okay, now we have a problem, Houston. We have a problem. Here's the problem, Houston. We have the problem, Houston. Surprise, Muhammad, chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. It is he who sent down upon thee the book, wherein are verses clear that are the essence of the book. The clear verses are the mother of the book. Oh, behold. Wait, 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 wait. And others ambiguous. What? As for those in whose hearts is swerving, they follow the ambiguous part. Those whose hearts are doubtful, they follow the unclear verses, desiring dissension to use them to divide people, right? And desiring its interpretation. And none knows its interpretation save only God. And those who firmly, those firmly root in knowledge say, we believe in it, all is from our Lord, yet none remembers, but men possess the minds. What the hell? Let me enlarge it. What? What the hell? Not all the verses are clear. There are verses in this book that are ambiguous. No one knows what they mean except Allah, God. And only those who are perverse in heart focus on the ambiguous verses to cause dissension. But if you fear Allah, avoid them. What? Now, let's do the burial, shall we? Exactly. Now, focus, guys, so you can learn. And the materials are there, Bible Student KJV. Do your part to win Muslims for the Lord Jesus Christ, Bible Student KJV. You got the material. Okay, let me ask you a question. How can you have unclear verses in the Quran 
when I just quoted to you several passages, clear, things clear, explained in detail, explained in detail, explained in detail, explained in detail, in detail. Not some, it says the book in here, in case you think it's some, a detailed explanation of everything. We sat down a book explaining all things. Provide the complete details. How then can you have unclear verses? Right? Let me show you. Others are ambiguous, unclear. How? Number two. Where does the Quran tell you how many unclear unclear verses there are and where are they found in other words if i want to make sure i don't focus on an unclear verse so i don't get all angry i need to know how many unclear verses there are where they are located to avoid them how many are there we don't know the quran doesn't say where are they located we don't know the quran doesn't say Okay, third problem. If only Allah knows what they mean, of what use, of what purpose does it serve to send down unclear verses that benefit no one because no one knows what they mean? And if you don't know what they mean, how then can you apply them? How can you apply them? Can you help me out? And fourthly, how can Allah's speech be unclear? Because remember, the verses are all the speech of Allah. Again, we have Allah saying that certain parts of a speech are unclear and you can't figure it out and you can't understand it. Then why then reveal it? If these verses do not benefit Muslims and Muslims cannot be guided by them, then why reveal them? Right? But now, you know what's funny, guys? You want to laugh? Then we're going to wrap it up on one more point. You want to laugh? Here's what's funny. You see, it says, a book whose verses are set clear. You'll find in many chapters of the Quran, certain letters, Arabic letters, Alif, Lam, Ra, which will be abbreviated as A-L-R. Did you know, guys, this is a fact, did you know that to this day, no Muslim knows the meaning of those letters? No Muslim knows what those letters mean and why they're there? But hold on. I thought we're told this book, whose verses have been expounded in detail, and a detailed explanation of everything. Right? Now notice the contradiction. Here you have chapter 11, verse 1, whose verses, right, have been made firm and have been expounded in detail, and yet it begins with these three letters, Alif, Lam, Ra, and you ask any Muslim what it means, no one knows what it means. Then how can the Quran explain everything, a detailed explanation of everything, a book explaining all things, a book that expounds the verses in detail, when it doesn't even tell you what these letters mean and why they're there. Verses explained in detail. Provide the complete details. Exactly, Texas chick. You know why? Because people don't know the Quran, but now you know it. You got to study the arguments and share them with Muslims and share with Christians. So never ever consider being Christian. I'm sorry. Never ever consider being Muslim. And never ever leave Christianity, but love the Lord Jesus Christ. Jimmy, what she, what Candace Owen showed is that your mother is a Shia whore, and that your mother was known for having brothels in Iran, and that your mother did twenty Shia in one night, and didn't even charge them for doing muta, and there you were born. So that's what Candace Owen showed. 
You're a bastard and a son of a spiritual prostitute. Okay? So I want you to know that. Be proud of your whore mother because the Shia are proud of her. Jim, Jimmy Nunya. Be proud of your whore mother because the Shia are proud of her. And they're proud that you are their spawn. Sired on that night like Freddy Cougar. All right. Everyone got it now? All right, we see it, right? Okay. We got problems, don't we? So let me repeat the problem if you didn't get it. Number one. Where does the Quran tell us how many unclear, ambiguous verses there are and where are they found in order to avoid quoting them? Because Allah says only those who are perverted heart quote them. Number two, what purpose does it serve to send down unclear verses when no one will benefit by them, no one can be guided by them, why include them at all? Number three. How can parts of Allah's speech be unclear, not understandable, if Allah's speech is perfect and consistent and Allah never speaks unclearly and Allah can never communicate in a manner that will leave people confused, not knowing what he's saying. You understand my point? And number four, how can there be any unclear verses when the Quran has gone out of its way, out of its way to say, this Quran is a book that explains everything in detail, all things, not some things, in case you missed it. So I keep repeating it. The book explained in detail. And then it says all things. The book which we have explained in detail with knowledge. It's right there in the article. All right. A detailed explanation of everything. The book explaining all things. This is Islam. Final thing, finally. Remember, the Quran is uncreated, right? The Quran is uncreated. The Quran has no beginning. All right. Now watch here. Now I want to ask you this question. And we're done. This one, this part. And Lord Wayne, you pray for my traveling mercies, no car accident, no breakdown, no violence. God protect my daughters and I miraculously bring them to me. And the Lord used me to deliver that individual that they see how ugly Islam is, how beautiful Lord Jesus Christ is, and do not go to Saudi Arabia. Okay, now, let me show you this. Watch here. Here's another problem. Because remember, it's uncreated. It has no beginning. It's the speech of Allah. All right. I need to know the answer to this. Maybe you can help me. I need to know the answer to this. Okay, right here. I'll do a part three. Talk about the names given to prophets and individuals. Surely, disbelievers are those who said Allah is the third of the three in a trinity. The word trinity is not in the Arabic. That's a lie from hell. Okay? Doesn't say. In fact, I'll give you a more accurate translation. Here. Let's go pick thought. Here you go. They surely disbelieve who say, lo, Allah is the third of three. When there is no God, save the one God. Okay. Third of three. Allah is the third of three. There are two others. Who are the two others? Now watch. If they desist not from so saying, a painful doom will fall on those of them who disbelieve. Will they not rather turn unto Allah and seek forgiveness of Him? Seek forgiveness of Him? Okay, now watch here. I forgot this. So I was supposed to do this. All right. Now notice who the other two are. Allah is the third of three. Notice who the other two are. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no other than a messenger. He's only a messenger. Messengers, the like of whom have passed away before him. And his mother was a saintly woman. Count Allah, one. 
Messiah, two. His mother, Mary, three. Allah is the third of three. And his mother was a saintly woman. And they both used to eat earthly food. See how we make the revelations clear for them. And see how they are turned away. Now, why does it say they both ate food? Saying, you see, they can't be gods. Because they ate food. They're just human. See, Mary can't be a goddess. Jesus can't be God. They ate food. See, we make it clear to you. They're just human. Oh, so the Quran says there are people who are disbelievers because they believe Allah is the third of three and the other two is Messiah and Mary. This is the argument of the Quran. And the proof that Messiah and Mary are not two gods along with Allah so that there are not three gods is that Messiah and Mary ate food. They're human. And if you still don't get that the three are Allah, Mary, and Jesus. Here, same surah, 5116. Same surah, 5116. Watch here. And when Allah saith, O Jesus, son of Mary, didst thou say unto mankind, take me and my mother for two gods besides Allah? Beside Allah? Okay. Allah is the third of three gods. Who are the other two? Messiah, son of Mary, and his mother. And so now Allah is going to tell Jesus in front of people, didst thou send to mankind, take me and my mother for two gods besides Allah? He saith, be glorified. It was not mine taught her that to which I had no right. If I used to say it, then thou knewest it. Thou knowest what is in my mind, and I know not what is in thy mind. Lo, thou, only thou art the knower of things hidden. Okay. So let me ask you a question. In eternity before creation, Allah was busy speaking about some group that believe there'll be three gods, Allah, the Messiah, Jesus, and Mary, his mother. We don't know who that group was because we have no evidence of that group. The Muslims cannot cite a single historical, archaeological documentation, inscription from the alleged time of the Quran, 7th century, 600 years after the birth of our Lord, telling us who this group was. Who is this group that supposedly existed at a time Muhammad that believed Allah, Jesus, and Mary are three gods? Who are they? What's their name? What evidence do you have? Nada, zip. So Allah has been busy from eternity before creation. Allah has been busy from eternity before creation speaking about, thinking about some group that worshiped three gods, Allah, Jesus, and Mary. And we don't know who that group is because we have no historical evidence, not a single trace of them. And yet Allah was not busy speaking about the belief of all Christians at that time. What do I mean? All the major branches of Christianity that exist in 7th century, the so-called Nestorians, the Assyrians, my ancestors, Miaphysites, Jacobites, Yacobiah, the Coptics, Byzantine, the Aphysites, the Athelitism, Orthodox and Catholic, they all worship God as Trinity. All of them. They all have the same Trinity. It's the disagreement about Jesus' divine human natures. They all believe the one true God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That was the belief of all these groups that were in schism. And the Quran doesn't say a single thing about any of them. Nowhere in the Quran does it say they are disbelievers who say, Allah is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, or any variation of it. Allah is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Or there are disbelievers who say the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one God, one Ilah. There are disbelievers who say the Father and Jesus' Word and the Spirit are one Ilah. Not a single word about the dominant view of all the major branches of Christianity at the time of Muhammad. But Allah was worried in eternity before creation about some group that believed there are three gods, Allah, Jesus, and Mary, 
And we don't know who that group happens to be because we don't have a trace of them. What's going on here? You get it? What's going on here? Lord willing, in part four, oh, I'm sorry, part three, we're going to show how stupid this claim is that the Quran is Allah's speech because you're going to see the names of people and places are so garbled up and dependent on other languages that did not exist in eternity. So we're going to continue exposing Allah's speech. But Lord willing, if you're praying for me, if I make it, in time, Lord willing, tomorrow, my next session will be James White, the High Priest and Atonement, if the Lord wills. So with that said, brethren, we're going to wrap it up. We had a good crowd. Thank you. May the numbers increase for the glory of Jesus Christ, not for my praise. But you know what to do for me. You in prayer warriors, don't stop praying until the Lord takes me home or until he returns. Pray and cry out to the Lord. My daughters and I, God grants us miraculous divine, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, health. My daughters fall in love with Jesus Christ, and I fall in love with Jesus Christ more and more. Never fall into any scandal. Finish the race glorifying Jesus Christ. As you see, the Lord's protect me from these dogs. The Lord do the miracle that this year I'll see a miracle. Two miracles this year. One, my daughters in my life every day. Martin removed from Michelle's life. She repents and lives a life of celibacy, fearing the Lord. The Lord bring about his will, something revealed to me, and I believe it's confirmed. And ask the Lord to continue to provide ministry PayPal patron that I don't lose support, steady, if not by his grace, increases, and use it lawfully for the glory of the Lord. With that said, Lord willing, I will see you maybe tomorrow night, late night in my hotel room, if the Lord wills. But pray for the miracle of Tuesday. I'm going to meet that person Tuesday. And all the, only the Holy Spirit can use me to knock sense in that person. They don't go to Saudi Arabia. And pray for my health, discipline. I get healthier. God destroy my bondage to food and lust. Getting healthier and holier for the glory of Jesus Christ. Hope you're blessed. Hope you enjoyed it. Article, description box. Take my materials, videos. Upload them, clip them, translate them. But do not charge. And make sure you present the facts clearly. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Keep us in love with you, holy and pure, worshipful, doers of your word, loving you, Lord Jesus. Our loved ones, my daughters, even their mother, sealed by the Spirit, never shaming you, but glorifying you until you summon us until you return and return sooner than later, Lord Jesus. You died, you rose again, and you returned physically and bodily. And Muhammad is under your feet. Joseph Smith is under your feet. You live, they're dead. Because you live, we will live. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Save us, Lord. Have mercy on us. Maranatha. Take care, guys.